Welcome to the shop. I want to show you our new cameraman. So here is our camera setup here in the shop. It is a just cheap $100 jib that I just use for positioning things. This is our camera. It's the Canon 70D. Got the microphone on top. And you kind of notice it's a little loud in here. I've got the music going. I've got the fan running. And when I want to go start recording, I've got to come over here, uh, unplug the fan, turn off the music from my phone, and press record behind the camera. You can see over here, I've set up a little system to take care of that for me. So pay attention to the fan noise, the music, and the camera. Are you ready? Echo, turn the recording on. Recording, fan off, music off. Let me show you how it works. Echo, turn the recording off. Okay. All right, let's move from left to right and show you what's going on with the hardware and then we'll dive into the software right after. So on the top left corner, we've got the Amazon Echo. That's what allows us to use voice commands to turn things on and off. Right below, I just got this cheap, uh, it's a wireless keyboard and trackpad and it's $12 on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it because if you do anything with Raspberry Pi, it's been amazing to have you know a keyboard and a mouse in one USB port. Eh, I don't need to go into that. Really awesome, really like it. Uh, this is the touch screen for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, $70, which is actually not a bad price, but is a little pricey, you know, for a project to turn on a couple shop, you know, fans and stuff like that. But the reason why I bothered with all of this is because I plan on having our uh, trailer conversion completely automated. I want to be able to, you know, come up and say, turn on the hot water heater and touch the hot water heater and turn it on. So this was my first step into that and it was a complete success. So I'm glad I bought the touchscreen. Below that is just the driver for the touchscreen that comes with it. Usually it's mounted behind the screen. And then this is connected to the Raspberry Pi. It's actually the Raspberry Pi is the brains of the operation. And the Echo is just allowing us to use voice recognition to control the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and the Raspberry Pi then has all of these little wires that come out and go into this eight channel relay board. So the goal of this whole project is to be able to control regular 110 volt outlets but you can't do that with a Raspberry Pi because you just fry it with such high voltages. Out of the relay board, we just go into a little four gang box that just has traditional wiring for you know, regular outlets, except that instead of each one going into uh, you know, a circuit breaker, it goes into the relay board so it can be switched on and off. And then you have your main power cord right here, which comes in and then splits four ways into the four inputs for the relay. Uh, above the outlets is just a little uh, cheap speaker. I'm going to upgrade this speaker. Uh, so I just have an aux cable coming out. Uh, and how I control the speaker is also with the relays. So the relays don't have to control voltage. Ultimately, they're just electrically con controlled switches. Triggering the camera was just a little bit tricky. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. I decided to go with a wireless remote control. And I simply just soldered two wires to the push button on the remote control. And when that relay is closed, those two wires touch for one second, they open back up, and then that is simulating pressing the button on the remote. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the software side of things because quite frankly, I'm in way over my head. But as far as I can tell, there's three main ways to control a Raspberry Pi with an Echo device, and you can Google how to use those. There's the easy way, there's the medium hard way, and the really hard way. Uh, I chose the easy way, which is using a script from a guy called Maker Musings on GitHub, and he developed a way to trick the Amazon Echo into thinking that the Raspberry Pi is a Wemo device. Uh, and so the Wemo devices are nice because they don't need to use skills, they don't need to use apps, they don't need to access Amazon's API. All they need is a Wi-Fi connection, uh, and he called this script FOMO. And then to actually make the camera record, I had to write just a small script that when it was triggered by a relay, it would trigger another relay to flash for one second. For example, I can have the camera way up there doing like an overhead shot and I can say, Echo, turn the recording on. Fan is off, music is off, camera is on. I can do my work down here. As soon as I'm done, or maybe I need a break, you know, I got a boring part to film. I just say echo, turn the recording off. Okay. And recording's off, music is back on, and the fan is back on. So once you ask Alexa to discover new devices, 
They show up here in your smart home tab on the Alexa app. And so you can see in devices, I've got uh, the speaker, the camera, and the fan named. And that's because I named them here in the script. Uh, and then the, all the other ones, I just named the relays until I have a use for them. So relay seven, relay three. And then so once you've discovered all the new devices that you've listed in the FOMO script, then you can put them in a group. So I have two groups. I have everything, you know, if something's going wrong and I just want to turn everything off, I say, Alexa, turn everything off or Alexa, turn everything on. Uh, or I have the recording. So that's how I did the, you know, turn the recording on. I can say, Alexa, turn the recording on. And when I do, it turns on the camera, the speaker, the fan, and relay three. So there's obviously an unlimited potential. You can control anything with any input to any output. It's literally just endless what you can do with this thing. So I'm really excited to keep moving forward and experimenting with new things. But for me, this is a great start. It's also really nice because I just now have wireless and voice activated music in the shop. So I can just say, Echo, turn the music off and the music goes off. But when I'm recording, sometimes it's a hassle uh, to have the compressor kick on. If I'm using the nail gun or something, I'll start a recording to talk to the camera and then the compressor kicks on because it's got a small leak. So I've got this hooked up as well so that when the recording is activated, it simply ha doesn't have power. It can't turn on. Uh, I could, you know, turn on video lights, turn the recording on. So I can, I mean, it's anything. And you might be asking why are you doing this instead of just using, you know, the Wemos for 30 or $50 an outlet? I want to be able to say things like, what's the temperature of the water heater? Uh, how much water is in the gray water tank? Uh, I want to have sensors and feedback from all of the systems in that trailer. And by learning how to do it on the Raspberry Pi now, I'll be able to much better control the trailer, not to mention the price. This is eight relays for $8, so a dollar a piece. I think the cheapest smart outlet is $35. So as far as price is concerned, investing $35 into one Raspberry Pi and then as many relay boards as you want, much more cost effective. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I will give you an update at some point if anything goes wrong, but so far it's working as exactly as I would hope.